Hey guys, Andy here at MP Java. Today I'm going to show you how to generate a random number through atmospheric noise. So if you haven't gone to my website, you can actually see the article is here. I'm just going to do the video to accompany that article. But everything is actually coming from random.org, which is a fantastic site which offers us a source of randomness which we can tap into through an RPC API. Sorry, there is no RESTful web service for this. And you can actually go and generate random numbers or random strings, random blobs. There's a little bit of a list there I'll show you in a second. Now I've put, come up with a proof of concept and that proof of concept is this application that goes off and executes this application. Let's actually execute it. And you can see that it's gonna go retrieve some random numbers from random.org. So I actually here, you can actually see the JSON a request okay and then you have the JSON uh, reply over here now I'm gonna go through this in a second but you can see that I requested one number and I got 502 or I'm requesting a random integer there and on another run I requested actually five random integers so five came back over here and then there's a couple of you know added features that we're gonna go through in a second but I'm gonna show you how to actually go through all of this and this proof of concept is available on github so you guys can go and fork it and, and make it better and make it your own, okay? So first off, I'd like to tell you what the dependencies are, okay? So for this little application that I came up with, um, I'm using an HTTP client, right, to make the post request to random.org and I used Apache HTTP components for that. I also used Jackson data binding in order to map the Java objects to JSON and, and back and forth, all right? And a little fairy dust all over the place, with Spring Boot, okay? So I'm using Spring Boot 2.x over here, and you're gonna see that without Spring Boot, this would actually been a little bit painful to put all the objects together, all right? Let me go back here to random.org. Like I said, amazing site over here. It's actually used for online, online uh, games and lotteries, and there's a whole bunch of things that it's used for. You can have a paid license or a free one, which I've actually used, all right? So if you log in here, it's very easy to create an account uh, let's log into ours or mine, <laughs> not yours. You can see here in my, my details, it's a free account. And you can see here for API services, I have two API keys, right? So if I actually uh, click here, use this service, you're gonna see a couple of API keys. This one here I stopped, it was called MVP Java Random Keys. And that's the one I had used to put this tutorial or this you know, blog post together. And um, I actually deactivated it because I don't want people to actually use my API key and use all my free requests. So that's why it stopped. Now I created another one, random demo over here, which is obviously for the demo video that I'm gonna show you now. So you have a limit and you have a bit usage and stuff like that. And I haven't even come close to busting this yet, right? Obviously, because this is for like tutorial sake, but you guys can go and create one of those uh, accounts very, very quickly within you know two minutes and you got your API key. Once you got your API key, right? You click on this, you're gonna see a um, API key number over here, okay? You're gonna copy that and then you're gonna come over to the project and you're gonna go to your application.properties and you're gonna copy paste your API key over here, okay? In order to make this application work when you're actually gonna git clone this from the git repository. Now you can see I have this one commented out and that is only because that was the API key that I stopped and that I used for the, um, the blog post, all right? So let's actually take a look at what's going on here in the main method. First off, you can see here that I'm auto watering through Spring Boot a class called application, all right? And that's just gonna say start application. Let's go actually go see what that guy does. Now, remember in the output over here, I actually showed you there was three test runs, okay? So the test runs, the entry point of the application is actually here. So you can see here, one, two, three, actually requests for random numbers. So I've created a class called atmospheric random because you know we're getting this random number through the atmospheric uh, noise that is provided by random.org. So in order to keep it you know, in the spirit of random and secure random, the way we're used to using them in Java, I'm actually also using them and saying atmospheric random.nextint. So I've got some defaults set up that's only gonna request one random integer from our, a very small range of one to 1000, okay? And over here, you can actually use the overloaded method of nextint to say, hey, I want five numbers from a range of one to 2000. And that's actually the test run 
that you see here, you'll see in the JSON request, right? I'm using a JSON RPC version 2.0, which is the latest version at this time from random.org. I'm executing the method generate integers that you're gonna see through their API, okay? And I have an ID here, which I'm actually using an atomic integer to make sure they always get a new ID. And here are my parameters, all right? So there's that API key that we want to get from random.org once you create your, um, your account. And then I'm saying I want five random integers from a range of one to 2,000 and a replacement of true. Replacement means you're willing to accept duplicate values. So in this case here, yes, they all were different, but we could have, because we said we wanted replacement, which is the default, by the way, get another value of one, two, two, seven, all right? So, and then the default base is 10, but we're gonna see why we could actually change this to, let's say, base two, okay? So let's go back here, and the other overloaded method is the same one as the second one, except here you can actually say replacement value false, you do not want any duplicates, all right? So let's dive in a little bit more into these uh, API details. If you go to random.org, you go to here, JSON RPC API, release number two, right? Now, first of all, you should really read the fundamentals. This is gonna talk about very, very high level things, but eventually what you're gonna do once you get your API key, you're gonna to go to the core APIs, you're gonna to go to basic API, which is the one I basically implemented here. And you're gonna see there's a lot of methods that we can actually execute it. And this is what I'm saying, you guys can take the project and run with it, right? I've put in some base work in there for you to get a good skeletal structure and something going. I actually implemented the generate integers method over here. And you can see this here, these are the values that showed up in the uh, JSON request, right? So in the JSON request, you'll see that I kept true here. You have n, mac, min, max, replacement, all that kind of stuff is exactly as is in the API, okay? And then you have optional parameters, which I incorporate as well, replacement I just went through in the base of 10, but we can see here, we can actually um, supply a value of two, eight, 10, or 16, which obviously are the other bases. So the response here is actually what's also mapped to a Java object. So this Java, the JSON string comes back and we have our data which contains our actually an array of random integers. So for the first call that I made in uh, the application over here, you'll notice that once I get the random integer printed, it's actually an int, it's not an array of ints. That's because in the code, I get the first element of the array, okay? To make it easy to use next int, just like it's easy to use random.nextint or secure random.nextint, right? I want to keep in the spirit of that. And also the other overloaded methods, because you're asking for more than one, right? Because here I'm asking for five, here I'm asking for three, you'll see that an array of ints comes back and then we're using the arrays um, Java class in order to print those out in a, in a nice readable fashion. So you'll actually notice that in the response, you'll get a, basically an inventory of how many bits have been used, how many bits are left, how many requests you have left, how many requests you have left. Right, you have, I think, about 999 requests for one day for the free uh, API key. And then you have this advisory delay, which I didn't take into account in the application because, like I said, just a proof of concept, but I would definitely uh, take this into account if you would take it to the next step. This basically says, do not make a request or try not to make a request until this X number of milliseconds has elapsed, right? So because this is also a free API account, uh, API key account, you know, they have other requests going on. So sometimes you might get like a suggestion not to uh, send a request, for example, for another, you know, two seconds or something like that. For So here you'll notice that the advisory delay is, uh, you know, almost, uh, it's a little bit more than a minute, a uh, second and a half, excuse me. So the program should take that into account for making another request. However, mine didn't, and it just kind of blasts through and it's still not a problem. You just can have a little bit of a latency there, okay? So you'll notice that uh, the atmosphere class is here and let's take a look at it because that is really the century, uh, the century, the central point of the application, right? You have three dependencies here that are uh, injected via the constructor. So everything is basically, are very basically value objects when you were talking about the, um, the value classes that we're gonna take a look at, for example, from the response and the request, but also for the atmospheric random, you use it and you can reuse it, right? You just one instance in your application and you reuse it over and over again, just like you would do, let's say for a normal random or secure random. So the first thing is, 
we need a dependency on uh, HTTP uh, client or you know the Apache HTTP components for the HTTP client to make our request to get the actual random number. I came up with my own HTTP post factory. I was getting you know into a lot of creational details leaking out into the the code, and so I decided to put this in its own class. And we have the uh, random mapper that comes from the Jackson library in order to help us map back and forth between uh, Java objects and JSON strings, right? So here's the next int method. You can see here that I'm using those defaults that are actually supplied by HTTP post factory. And we have a static import over here. You can actually see it and that's where they're coming from. So if we actually just you know, quickly go over there, you'll notice that those are the defaults you know, one number from one to 1,000 and we want repeatable values, okay? So value of true and we have a base of 10. So those are, are our defaults and you could always play around with those. Now we have the overloaded ones and all that's going on here at the end of the day is one is passing over a call to the next to eventually get to this one who is actually using the HTTP post factory to create our HTTP post request based on those parameters and then pass it over to the HTTP components API from Apache, right? So actually make the request to that uh, random.org site. So over here, some of that information is in the application.properties, right? You have the URI, you have the JSON RPC version, and that's all information that you're gonna go have to get from this site over here Remember I said that you have to go read um, the fundamentals and the fundamentals actually goes through all of this stuff, all right? Now, I'm not gonna try to make the video much longer than it should be, but you also have to take into account errors, okay? Which I have taken into account here as well. So you'll notice that there's these value objects here for the request and for the response, and one of them is RPC error. And in the RPC error, you'll notice I'm using Jackson Jackson annotations here to make sure everything gets created through the constructor because I don't want these properties to change, right? I want them to be built and stay immutable. And then over here, if there is no data that comes back, that value for the integer array will be null or empty. And then I will be able to populate the RPC error class over here. So if you go look through the code, you'll see how I do that. I don't want to go too much into these uh, value classes over here but I wanna go into how Spring actually builds all this for us because if it wasn't for Spring, this would actually be a little uh, um, dirty to do, right? You'd have to do a lot of new this, new that, put it together. So the factory itself is a Spring Java config class called random Java config. And you can see here, atmospheric random is a bean. And anytime we request it, it puts together our three dependencies that I just went through, right? And those are some private inner classes here, not inner classes, but private inner uh, methods over here that I've come up with in this Java class. And you can actually see the new is, is, is being done in here, right? So I'm creating a minimal HTTP client for us. I'm creating our HTTP factory for us. I'm creating a random mapper, right, from Jackson. And this little uh, Boolean actually is there to print out all the uh, JSON strings that we see uh, over here, right? If you actually don't wanna see all those JSON strings, then all you gotta do is go over here and change this to false and, you, and you'll just see the responses come back in terms of the number, okay? So all this is put together for us and then we just need to dependency inject this through the auto wired, all right? So this is what, make, this is what makes it really nice is in our application, we just ask for it, okay? And it gets injected for us, as I just showed you in the random Java config, right? When I wanna come up with an application, which is also Spring Bean, it automatically calls the atmospheric random, builds everything, dependency injects it into the constructor, and then I can simply use it as I would use the normal Java class. Now, a couple of things to bear in mind, right? Yes, this is gonna be much slower than your typical random or secure random because you're actually going through HTTP, you're actually going through this site. But this is actually as random as you're gonna get, right? I mean, what could be more random than getting this stuff from, um, from the atmospheric noise of the earth, right? So this is a pretty cool project. You guys can go ahead and uh, have fun with this. Let me know what you think. If you wanna fork the project, go ahead on GitHub. 
uh, for example why don't you try and um, go over here and uh, if we go to the basic API like I said there's some other things we can do this was actually another one that I thought extremely interesting generating UUIDs right so over here now you can see that a lot of this stuff has already been incorporated for us in our project here right so if we go back to this project okay you look over here the request over here you'll see that a lot of this stuff has already been set up for you right and all you got to do is tweak the differences so let me know what you guys think of this tutorial and another thing I'd like to mention is if you guys enjoy these type of tutorials that don't have any commercials or you know bother you with ads or anything like that why don't you uh, encourage me and subscribe to the channel also to the newsletter here on mvpjava.com leave a comment below put a thumbs up share it on social media that'll really encourage me as i'll see the site uh, growing with all the hard work i'm putting in as you can see here on my website uh, this awesome tutorial which again I try to put a unique content or content that has there's not a lot of stuff out there yet right it's only got 37 views so I really need your help to encourage me here in order for me to continue putting all of this time and effort which again is is out of my of my passion for Java but it's also nice to see um, the community give back in terms of interest okay so thanks for everything guys I hope you enjoyed that and um, until next time ciao